Hi, welcome to this Cobra Mouse primary video on multiplying by 10, 100 and 1000. Multiplying by 10, 100 and by 1000 is really quick and simple. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at some uh, techniques, some sort of shortcuts in this video to how to multiply these really quickly in your head without having to write down sort of column methods of multiplication to work them out. So first of all, we're going to look at how to multiply whole numbers by 10. Then we're going to look at how to multiply decimal numbers by 10, whole numbers by 100, multiplying decimal numbers by 100, whole numbers by 1000, and then finally decimal numbers by 1000. And you'll notice there's a pattern for each of these. So first of all, let's start off by multiplying 32 by 10. So watch the video on multiplication on cobramouseprimary.com if you need to recap how to multiply using the column method of multiplication. Um, I'm just gonna recap it now. So 32 times by 10, well, it's, the 10's got no units, so we can just multiply by the 10. So we'll put the zero down, 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 times 3 is 3. So whenever we multiply 32 by 10, the answer would be 320. Now you could do that for all of these multiplications that we're going to be doing. We could do 7 multiplied by 10, 25 multiplied by 10, 420 multiplied by 10, 801 multiplied by 10. We could use the column method for each of them, but there's a much quicker, simpler way to get the answer by multiplying by 10. So as you notice, our answer is 320. And the reason is, whenever you multiply by 10, each of the digits gets 10 times bigger. So the 30 becomes 300 and the two units becomes 20 and we get a zero at the end as a placeholder. So because we're gonna have a zero at the end as the placeholder for each of them, we can just put a zero on each of the numbers when you're multiplying by 10 and as long as the number's a whole number and all of these numbers are. So if we do seven multiplied by 10, the answer will be 70. If we do 25 multiplied by 10, the answer will be 250. If we do 420 multiplied by 10, the answer will be 4,200. Because it already had one zero, we're gonna add another one on, so we'll have two zeros on the end. And if we work out 891 multiplied by 10, the answer will be 8,910. Now that's just a shortcut to be able to work out the answers really quickly and simply. Um, the reason why it's the case is when you're multiplying by 10, each of the digits gets 10 times larger, so they move across one uh, column to the left in the place value, and you get a zero in the units column as the placeholder. Okay, so let's have a look at multiplying now decimal numbers by 10. So if we were multiplying 1.8 by 10, well, we've got 1.8 here. This is our place value columns. We've got thousands, hundreds, tens, units, tenths, and hundredths. And these are obviously the decimal points. And we're gonna multiply that by 10. Now, as we've seen already, when you multiply a number by 10, each of the digits gets 10 times larger in the answer. So the one will move across and become one ten, and that's 10 times larger. And the eight tenths will move across one column to the left, so it'll move to become eight units, okay? So if we multiply 1.8 by 10, our answer is 18. So when you multiply a decimal number by 10, you just move the digits one column to the left because you wanna make each of the digits 10 times larger. So if we had 2.3 multiplied by 10, well the two units will become 20 and the three tenths will become three units. So the answer would be just 23 by just moving each of the digits across one column to the left. Okay, 4.92 times by 10, well again, we would have the four units will become 40. The nine tenths will become nine units. Then we'll have the decimal point and then the two hundredths will become two tenths. So we would just move them across one column to the left. So if, for instance, we had, just to show you, 4.92, if we multiply by 10, that will give us 49.2, 49.2. Okay, our next question. Our next question is to multiply 0 0.9 by 10. So we've got 0 0.9, we're gonna multiply it by 10. So the zero will move across into the tenths column, or the tens column. That's not really gonna impact our answer. And then the nine in the tenths will move across to be units. So if we multiply 0 0.9 by 10, we will get nine. Okay, and our last example, if we multiply 0 0.04 by 10, again, each of the digits will move one column to the left. So we've got 0 0.04. So the naught will move across here, the naught, over naught will move to there, and the four will move across from the, the hundredths column into the tenths column. So the answer will be, instead of writing naught, naught point four, we will just write 0 0.4. And that makes sense, because if we had four hundredths and we multiply by 10, we will get four tenths. 
Okay, so just to recap, if we multiply whole numbers by 10, we can just as a shortcut put a zero on the end. Um, obviously I've explained why, but we can just put a zero on the end to get the answer. And if you're multiplying decimal numbers by 10, you just need to make each of the digits 10 times bigger. So you just need to move each of the digits across one column to the left. Okay, let's look, have a look at how to multiply whole numbers by 100. So if we had 17 and we multiply that by 100, Okay, well, it's got no, the number of multiplied by has got no units and no tens. So we're multiplied by 100. So we can put the two zeros down and we're going to do one times seven, which is seven and one times one, which is one. So when we multiply 17 by 100, the answer is 1,700. Now, just like whenever we were multiplying by 10, the shortcut would be to add a zero on the end. If we multiply whole numbers by 100, we can add two zeros on the end, okay? And the reason is that you're making, you're moving all of, you're making all of the digits 100 times bigger. The, the 110 would move across into the thousands column, and the seven units will move across into the hundreds column, and you are into the hundreds column, and we will have two pl uh, zeros as placeholders. And um, again, the shortcut would be just to add two zeros on the end. So three times 100 is 300. 521 times 100, we'll add two zeros on, would be 52,100. Uh, 40 times by 100, we'll write the 40 down. And then again, add on two zeros, so that'll be 4,000. And finally, 10 times 100, write the 10 down, add on our two zeros, one, two, so the answer would be 1,000. So if we wanna multiply whole numbers by 100, again, you could consider it as in the digits are getting 100 times bigger, so that will move them across two columns in your place value. Um, alternatively, you can just, if they're whole numbers, add two zeros onto the end to just answer it really quickly and mentally. Okay, next. We're now gonna look at what happens if we multiply decimal numbers by 100. So 1.25, and we're gonna multiply that by 100. And that will mean that each of the digits will get 100 times bigger. So the one will get 100 times bigger, which is 100. Let's move two columns to the left, one, two. The two temps will move two columns to the left. Uh, to the left. So they will move to the 20s column. And the 500, so that move two columns to the left, so that will become five units. So the answer would be 125. And the quick way to do that is to just move each of the digits two columns to the left. So for instance, if we had 8.22 times by 100, again, you could just move them all two columns to the left and that will become 822 because the eight units will move into the hundreds, the two temps will move into the tens and the uh, two hundredths will move into the units. Okay, next uh, question. 1.8 times by 100. Again, if we had 1.8 and we times it by 100, each of the digits will get 100 times bigger. So the one will become 100, the eight will become eight tens, and then we'll have the zero, so it'll be 180, okay? Just moving the digits two places to the left. Again, we're gonna multiply 5.52 times by 100, so that will be moving the digits two places to the left, they're gonna get 100 times bigger. That will be 552. And finally, multiplying 0.02 by 100, the two will move two places to the left, so that will be two as our answer, okay? So if we multiply decimal numbers by 100, the digits get 100 times larger, and that the quick and easy way to do that is to just move the, the digits two places to the left in our answer, okay? Okay, um, now we're gonna look at how to multiply whole numbers by 1,000. Now, again, we could use the column method of multiplication, but let's have a look and see what hap what's happened so far. When we multiplied whole numbers by 10, we added on one zero on the end. When we multiplied whole numbers by 100, we added on two zeros on the end as a shortcut to get our answer really quickly. And if we're multiplying whole numbers by 1,000, we can just add on three zeros on the end as long as it's a whole number. So 35 times by 1,000, well, we would have 35, and then three zeros, one, two, three, so our answer would be 35,000. So six times a 1,000, well, one times, um, we're six times a 1,000, we're gonna write the six down, and we're gonna write our three zeros. 30 times by 1,000, we'll write our 30 down, and we'll write our three zeros, so it'll be 30,000. 14 times by 1,000, we'll write 14 down, and then add on three zeros, 14,000. And finally, 103 times by 1,000, we would write down 103, 103, and we'll put on our three zeros, so answer would be 103,000. Okay, and finally, 
let's have a look and see what happens when you multiply decimal numbers by a thousand. So if we had 8.3, if we multiply that by a thousand, each of the digits in 8.3 will get 1,000 times larger. So 8 times a thousand, well that would be 8,000, and that's the same as moving it uh, one, two, three columns to the left. And likewise, the 0 0.3, the three tenths, when we multiply that by a thousand, it will, move, it will get a thousand times bigger, which is the same as moving it three columns to the left. So that'll move one, two, three into the hundreds column. And then we'll put in our zeros as placeholders. So it will be 8,300, okay? And that will work for all of them, okay? So that if I wanted to multiply any of these numbers by a thousand, I can just move each of the digits three columns to the left and get the answer. So let's have a look at the next one. 1 1.2 times a thousand, 1.2. Let's move all the digits three columns to the left. So the one, one, two, three, and the two, one, two, three, and then put in the zeros. So the answer will be 1,200. Our next question, what uh, 0 0.6 times a thousand well 0 0.6 we multiply by a thousand so the six will move three columns to the left one two three so it will become 600 there's no point moving the zero at the front so the answer would be 600 and let's do the rest without in our head so if we multiply uh, 34.6 by a thousand we'll move each of the digits three columns to the left so the uh, three will move into the into the from the tens column into the tens thousands column the four will move from the units into the thousands the six will move from the tenths into the hundreds uh, and then we'll put in two more zeros to make sure that we have got the the correct answer okay and if we just sort of show that 34 multiplied by six we're going to move the digits three columns to the left so one two three one, two, three, and one, two, three. So our answer will be 34,600. And our last answer, our last question. Our last question is to multiply 3.05 by 1,000. So the three will move from the units into the thousands, and then our zero will move into the hundreds, our five will move into the tens, and our zero. So the answer will be 3,050. And that's it. So if we want to multiply whole, uh, whole numbers by 10, 100, or 1,000, we just add on the appropriate numbers of zeros. If we're multiplying whole numbers by 10, or, or sorry, decimal numbers by 10, we just move the digits to one column to the left. If we're multiplying uh, decimal numbers by 100, we move it two columns to the left. And if we're multiplying decimal numbers by 1,000, we move all the digits three columns to the left. And that's it.